The internet said this is a really bad idea. But you know not to believe everything you see on the internet, right? Right? Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, last week I showed you an electrical panel that I'm working on for a new CNC build. And this week we're gonna continue working on the electronics. Specifically, we're gonna look at cutting the NEMA enclosure to make openings for fans, connectors, switches, and other things we need to make the system function. Now, what I'd really like to do is put the box on the CNC plasma table and cut the openings there. So I asked the internet if that was a good idea and I was told unequivocally, no, that's a terrible idea. But is it? Let's try it and find out. You've seen me working on this electrical cabinet in a previous video. And whenever I work on something this complex, I always build a 3D model first, both so I can make sure that the components I'm buying are going to fit and that I got a box that's big enough but also so that I can plan out things like the 3D printed mounts that I made in a previous video and these connector panels that I'm gonna to need to fabricate for a future video. Um, today though, what I wanna do is focus on actually cutting the box and having a model of the box that I downloaded from the manufacturer makes this particularly easy. So in the box, I need cutouts in the bottom for these connector sub panels. And you can see if I remove those panels, these are just holes cut in the box and screw holes to mount the sub panels. And then I've got uh, ventilation in the front. This is a 120 millimeter PC case fan with a dust filter over it. And on top here is just a dust filter mounted on the door to give uh, an entrance where the fans pulling the air in on the bottom and an exit at the top where the warm air is being vented out. And then I need an opening for a switch to control the contactor to turn the power on and off. So if I get rid of the fans and get rid of the switch, you can see these are just four and a half inch round holes with uh, small holes for the screws. The screw holes on the top are small ones intended to be tapped for M4 so that I can just mount the bezel. The ones here on the bottom are larger so that normal fan screws or fan uh, vibration isolation mounts will just go through and attach the fan on the inside to the bezel on the outside. Now I have tried a lot of different processes for cutting these boxes. I've tried an angle grinder with a death wheel. I've tried a Dremel with a smaller death wheel. I've tried a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade, though wasn't a very good jigsaw. But every process that I have used on these boxes has been a pain. They're very hard to cut. This is 14 gauge mild steel. I don't know why, but this stuff seems a lot harder to deal with than other 14 gauge mild steel I've cut. But for whatever reason, they, they are just ornery. So I would like to try cutting this with plasma. Now the door should be pretty easy to get onto the CNC plasma cutter. The bottom is gonna take a little bit more work. I think we're gonna to have to make some tooling to actually be able to reach because I can't stand this up and get it under the arm on my plasma table. But uh, I've got this in here, I've got the model. So I went ahead and generated G code to make the cuts. So let's go out into the shop to the plasma table and see if we can actually make this happen or see if it truly is a terrible, terrible idea. Now, before we go and cut any expensive boxes, I wanna at least do a test and get some kind of an idea of how a coated uh, piece of material is gonna behave. This is 16 gauge, or excuse me, 14 gauge mild steel, which is the same material that the box is made out of, more or less, but this is painted. And this has a coat of primer and a couple of coats of gloss enamel on it. It's not the same as the powder coat that will be on the box, but at least it's what I have, and at least it'll give me an idea of kind of how a material with a coating on it is gonna respond before I go cutting an expensive box. So we'll, we'll shoot this first. We'll um, shoot a hole in this thing, uh, similar to what we're gonna have to put in the box, and just see what it does. I, I honestly have no idea. I'm pretty sure the plasma will go right through it, but what I don't know is how it will affect the coating, how the splatter across the top will affect the coating, and how the smoke on the underside will affect the coating. And if this goes okay, then we might decide to go ahead and cut the box. Let's see. Switch out safety glasses for dark glasses.
That's a little scrub at the top. I'm just gonna use some Windex here and let's just see how the residue behaves here. And that seems to come right off. So we've got a heat affected zone right around the cut, which looks to me to be about an eighth of an inch, maybe three millimeters. Did we not cut all the way through? Ah, interesting. Looks like we did not go all the way through, which means I need to go a little bit slower. Let me just go ahead and make another pass on this to make sure we're all the way through it. Okay, well, it looks like the top is no big deal at all. I mean, that just, it's not done enough damage to the top for me to care about it at all. As long as uh, I'm gonna cover it right up around the edges. And then on the bottom, we do have this smoke haze, but it does seem to come off with a little bit of elbow grease. If not completely, then mostly. And as long as I shoot the panels in such a way that this staining is on the side that is not gonna be visible, which I think I can do, it won't matter if that doesn't come off anyway. So I think this is gonna work. I think we should go for it. And you know, if I mess up an expensive electrical box, then the worst case scenario, we can just knock the dross off or any of the areas where it's affected and I can get matching spray paint and fix it. Fortunately, the electrical uh, cabinets are all standardized colors, ANSI 61 light gray to be exact. Okay, I've got the lid set up here. I squared it just using a rule and dropping a line from the uh, arm here to try to make sure that I had it square to the axis. And I think I'm good there. The other thing is that since this is powder coated, it's not gonna make good contact with the slats. So you can see I've got a little clamp over there on the other side. Um, that's just a little cant twist. I sanded off a small spot of bare metal on the inside of the door and the underside copper jaw, the cant twist is against that clamped on and then I have the plasma cutter ground clamp on that so that I have a good ground to this panel. And I think that's everything. I slowed the cutter down just a little bit to make sure it would go through. Did a couple of test cuts on that 16 gauge painted panel or 14 gauge painted panel. I think we're good. I think we just go for broke here. This is the money shot, as in, if I screw up this panel, that's what's actually gonna cost money. So I think we're ready to go. I don't think there's anything left to do, but to hit the button and see what happens. Safety glasses on and start. Well, it looks like this reacted very, very similarly to the paint. 
it's blasted clean just within, I don't know, two to three, maybe three millimeters of where the hole is, especially where the pierce was. And it looks like we got all the way through. I am gonna call that a win. Let me go get the box. We gotta cut some holes in the box too. It is generating a little bit more smoke than I was getting off of the painted panel, so I need to open a door here and air out the shop. Well, I think this is going to work. Uh, it turns out the fan filter shrouds and the switch almost completely cover the damage done by the plasma. You can see there's just a little bit of a heat affected zone where the powder coat is burned a little bit around the edge. This almost completely covers it. Right where the pierce was, it's slightly wider. I'm not sure if that would clean off, but it gets lost in the shadow and it's gonna be on the underside of the button. You're not even gonna be able to see it. And for the fans, the fan shroud completely covers the damage done to the box. So that looks good. And then on the inside, all of the brown staining just wiped right off of this uh, much, much more easily even than it did off of the painted panel. So that is a total win. So that's gonna be just fine. And so now I think it's time to cut some holes in the bottom of the box for all of the connectors. But that's gonna be a little bit tricky because this won't fit under my plasma table. So we need to make a little extension arm to hold the torch. So let's go over to the CNC mill and knock that out real quick. Okay, this is the extension arm that we just made. It's just got a notch in the back to accept this piece and a V in the front to accept the torch. And we'll just replace this part of the torch holder. I do have the plasma cutter completely unplugged so that we won't have any unpleasant surprises. Okay, and we're gonna wanna cut back into this corner of the box, so I'll orient the torch in this direction first. Make sure that the cable over here is gonna clear the gantry. Snug that down, and we should be ready to grab the box and set it up. And we'll just set the box in like this, and get it squared up to the gantry so we can cut it. As long as we're being smart, let's be really smart. Use two one, two, three blocks. And we can just pull the box in. And there it is, square to the gantry. Okay, I think we're all set up here. And to answer your question, no, there really isn't a good way for you to be able to see what's going on but I've got it set up, I've got it on my zero, I've done a dry run to try to make sure that I have enough clearance. 
And I think now we just cut the bottom of the box. Got my safety glasses here and I'm just gonna hit the button and hope for the best. Let me turn the plasma cutter back on. And let me connect the ground clamp. That would have been exciting trying to cut this with the pilot arc. Just brought the clamp around inside the box and connected it to one of the bolts. Okay. Plasma cutter's green. Hair looks good. Now we're ready to cut. Still a little bit warm, but would you look at that? We have holes cut in the bottom of the box. Let's see, I assume the bottom of this is gonna be pretty gnarly. Oh, it's actually welded to the slats, perfect. Yep, that's pretty dirty, but a little dish soap and that will come right off. Let me go get the box cleaned up and uh, I'll knock these out. And I'll meet you over at the bench. We've got the box reassembled here on the bench. And as you can see, the it did pretty well. It cleaned up real nice. Um, all of the staining and everything that was blasted out on the surface just came right off. And we've just got a little bit of a heat affected zone right around uh, where the plasma cut entered. And on the inside, it's kind of the same thing. This was all hazy. It was just a gnarly yellow stain. Same thing down here on the front where the plasma exited on the bottom and the smoke was trapped. It was uh, really gnarly. Let me see if I have a sample. Yeah, this is the piece that came out of the bottom here. You can see it is ugly, um, but all of this just wiped right off. I used a little bit of dish soap and water with a sponge. Um, I also tried Windex, that took it right off. It kind of stained the white paint on the test piece, but the powder coat here, it just came right off. Probably could have gotten a little bit more off on the inside here than I did, but it doesn't matter at all. And I've got this all cleaned up, put the electronic subpanel back in it. And that'll anchor down in there with four nuts in the corners. I won't bother with that now. And now let's take a look at trimming up the front. Now for the fan enclosures, I like to use these, uh, PC fan filters, and these will just go on just like this and cover up all the marks and it completely covers all of those holes. For the one up here on the top, I did small screws in here and I went ahead and just threaded them M4 and uh, that'll just go the inner panel here, these separate and the inner panel will just mount neatly with uh, four screws.
then there's a sheet of filter media in here and the whole thing just snaps on. For this one, we're actually gonna mount a fan. And since I film in the shop, I want things to be as quiet as possible. So I'm using a Noctua ultra quiet case fan. This one happens to be a five millimeter version or a five volt version, just because that's the power supply I had in here. And it comes with these silicone mounts. And those mounts should just go right through. And then we should be able to mount the fan on the inside. Now I want the, I want to draw air in. So I want it to draw this direction. I want to make sure that I've got the wire going in place where I can manage it. And that should be that. And it's just pulled those down. That's in place. Got our filter media and done. Last thing we need to mount on the front is this switch. And let me make sure I have the angle correct to be like that. And that should be that. That looks nice and neat. We got a clean appearance and you'll note that the, uh, the bezel on the switch has completely covered. There's ever so slightly the slightest hint of the burn mark visible on the bottom of the switch there, but it just looks like a shadow. There's no way anyone's ever gonna notice that, especially when it's oriented vertically. And the fan bezels completely cover any of the staining on the front. I would say that the plasma cutting worked out great. I really wasn't sure. Like I said, there were a lot of people on the internet that told me it was a bad idea, and maybe it was, but maybe I got lucky. But that is that. Now the last thing we have here is to fabricate the connector panels and actually do a bunch of the connector wiring. And we will work on that next time. If you're enjoying the series, uh, enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.